Hi everyone, my name is Alice. Today we're gonna have another GRE video on the verbal reasoning section. This is the first in a series of videos on the verbal discrete questions, which are the ones that have sentences with different options that you choose to fill in the blank. I'm gonna be going over all kinds of tips and tricks as well as easy, medium, and hard difficulty questions anywhere from one to three blanks. So make sure you don't miss the rest of the videos and I'll leave all the info for that in the description down below. Let's look at the first massive strategy that I have for answering this type of question which is that the dependent clause is key. This is the one that adds information. If you're unfamiliar with dependent clauses, you want to know about the difference between dependent and independent clauses. Independent clauses are a group of words that contain a subject and a verb, but these sentences make sense on their own. We have two examples at the bottom here. For example, Jane ate pasta and Sam went to the park. So these are complete sentences that have no additional information needed. Contrast that with the dependent clause, which is also a group of words with a subject and a verb, but they don't make sense on their own as a sentence. Usually this is because they have some sort of transition word like in this example, because she was hungry, or the second one, after he finished school. Independent and dependent clauses have to go together to basically make a fuller, more complete sentence with a lot more detail. And we can see that with the first full example, which is Jane ate pasta because she was hungry. Sam went to the park after he finished school. The independent clause gives the basic information that you're trying to convey, but the dependent clause adds in more details, more information, and helps you really understand how, why, who, and things like that. When it comes to the verbal discrete questions themselves, you'll see that oftentimes the information in that dependent clause gives you the details that you need to answer the blank. So let's take a look at our first example, which is question one. Dominant interests often benefit most from blank of governmental interference in business, since they are able to take care of themselves if left alone. Here, we have the main independent clause, which is dominant interests often benefit most from blank of governmental interference in business. The complete sentence, but it doesn't tell us what's supposed to go in the blank. If we only read that, we have no idea if that blank should be positive or negative or whatever. So we need to see how it relates to the dependent clause. And here it starts with since. Since can be thought of as a synonym for because. So we are relating the two clauses. Here, whatever is being said in the dependent clause is going to support and align with what comes before it. And the main idea here is that they, meaning dominant interests, are able to take care of themselves if left alone. So they can be left alone perfectly fine. What we can conclude as a result is that these dominant interests are independent. They don't need governmental interference in their business and they would benefit as a result, if we got rid of governmental interference. So we want less governmental interference for dominant interests. Equipped with that information, we can take a look at the different answer choices and figure out if they align with getting rid of governmental interference. The first answer is intensification. This really means a strengthening of governmental interference. If we have a intensification of interference, that means there's going to be more, which 
probably isn't the answer we're looking for. Choice B is authorization. So an authorization of governmental interference also is allowing there to be more of it. So that would be an increase as well. Probably not the answer. C is centralization. This doesn't really make sense, a centralization of governmental interference. If you think about it a little bit, it would probably be an increase if it did make sense. So C is probably not the answer. D is improvisation or making it up. It doesn't make sense to make up governmental interference, so this is likely not the answer. So we're left with E, elimination, getting rid of it or decreasing governmental interference. This makes a lot of sense because we know that dominant interests can take care of themselves if left alone, so they really don't want governmental interference and would benefit from an elimination of it. E is the correct answer in this case. Let's look at the second example that will hopefully solidify this idea. This one says, Kagan maintains that an infant's reactions to its first stressful experiences are part of a natural process of development, not harbingers of childhood unhappiness or blank signs of adolescent anxiety. So the independent clause here is this. Kagan maintains that an infant's reactions to its first stressful experiences are part of a natural process of development. The infant reacting to its first instances of stress is totally natural, totally normal, nothing that we have to worry about at all. And then we have this, which is a transition word, not. So clearly there is a contrast between what we have in the independent clause and what's going to come in the dependent clause. And then with harbingers of childhood unhappiness or blank signs of adolescent anxiety, these are two similar examples that this author is bringing up. What we know is that an infant's reactions are totally normal. And if you're not familiar with the word harbinger, it means something that signals the approach of something else. You can think of it as a warning and usually what comes after it is negative somehow. So a harbinger of childhood unhappiness, basically a warning sign that this child is going to be unhappy as they grow up. Here, we have these two examples that are different from what we're talking about in the independent clause. So what's underlined in the independent clause is that an infant's reactions are totally normal and they're a natural process of development. They are not harbingers of childhood unhappiness or blank signs of adolescent anxiety. Essentially, the harbingers and the blank signs here are going to be seen as similar examples and they're going to be different from the natural process of development. Basically, imagine saying this to a new parent, it's totally okay that the baby is crying. So we're looking for a word here that is talking about the signs, basically something that could signal adolescent anxiety or something that's talking about it being a bad signal specifically. So let's take a look at the different answer choices here. Choice A is prophetic, like a prophet or giving a prophecy, basically making a prediction about the future. Now, since we know that we're talking about a harbinger or a warning sign of the future or some sort of signs about adolescent anxiety, this looks like it might be a good answer choice. Let's look at the next one just to make sure. B is normal, a normal sign of adolescent anxiety. 
Hmm. This doesn't make sense because in the transition word not, highlighted in black, says that it is not a normal sign of anxiety. An infant's reactions are perfectly normal and they're natural. It is not a sign that the adolescent in the future is going to have anxiety. So it doesn't make sense for B to be the answer. C is monotonous, meaning boring and repetitive. There's really nothing about boringness or repetition here. We're really talking about something being natural or being of the future or predictions. So C doesn't make sense as an option. Choice D is virtual meaning either online or meaning almost. Here, it also doesn't make sense for it to be an online sign of adolescent anxiety. What would that even mean? Almost a sign also doesn't make sense because we're talking about whether this is natural or not. If it's a signal of unhappiness or anxiety or not. We're not really talking about the degree of it or anything like that. So virtual doesn't make sense here. That leaves choice E, which is typical. Typical is also related to not here in the sentence because, again, the emphasis of the independent clause is that these reactions are natural and they're a process of development. They are not harbingers of childhood unhappiness or signs of adolescent anxiety. Here we have the added detail that normal and typical are very similar words, they're synonyms. So when you see that, it's also easy to cross those out because you know you can only choose one answer choice in this type of question. So as we can see, the answer choice is going to be prophetic, basically meaning that it's a prophecy that this infant is going to have adolescent anxiety, which it's not. So A, makes sense as the correct word for the blank here. Those are the examples for today. I want to remind you that the dependent clause here is key. You want to make sure you understand the relationship between the independent clause and the dependent clause because that's where you're going to get a lot of those details that tell you what kind of word and what kind of idea you're looking for for that sentence. In the next video, I'm going to talk a little bit more about those transition words that help you understand that relationship. So make sure you tune in to see more information on that. If you're looking for more information on how you can actually implement these tips and tricks into getting a better score on your GRE, please visit alicechengre.com. I have more information about what it's like to work with me. For example, that I was patient and kind, I explained things to Sarah thoroughly and offered examples and tips. With Joshua, I gave him a better understanding of what he should work on to get over that 150 score that he was aiming for. I have more information about how private GRE tutoring works with me. For example, you can choose between writing, quantitative, and or the verbal section. I will give you a customized study plan with session agendas for each time we meet. I can provide sample questions, different study resources, do a content review, go over strategies and examples with you, and as always, I offer flexible payment and scheduling options. Thanks so much for watching!